So what exactly do proteins look like? Well, we're going to talk about it on paper here, and I'm going to talk about it in three dimensions with structures here to think about how we both describe and then visualize protein structure. So there's a hierarchy of protein structure that we want to think about. There's primary structure, secondary, quaternary, our tertiary and quaternary structure. But an important distinction just right at the outset here is to indicate that, and here is primary structure. Even though we call this a structure, really it's, um, it's not two-dimensional, it's really one-dimensional, it's really the sequence of amino acids. So primary structure is really the sequence of amino acids. And so it's really sort of one-dimensional in that regard. They look like a one there, one-dimensional. So something to think about with all of these um, different kinds of uh, structure from primary through quaternary is I want you to understand and think about what is holding that together. So there's another video that's going to uh, talk about the energetics and sterics of protein structure formation. That's the uh, video on the Ramachandran plot. But anytime we form structure, I want you to understand that there's two main things to consider. There's sterics, we don't want things banging into one another, and there's energetics. And it's really entropy and enthalpy compensations. Because when we form a structure, that's not having more molecules move more. So it's an entropic penalty to form structure. So there must be some type of enthalpic compensation. There must be some type of intermolecular forces that are holding that structure together that provide that energetic compensation for something that is unfavorable from an entropy standpoint. Okay, so let's start thinking about this hierarchy of structure. So here's a little peptide here. When we think about primary structure, again, that's the structure of um, the sequence, really, of amino acids. Even though it's called a structure, it really just represents the sequence of amino acids. It's held together by peptide bonds. So again, the intermolecular force is really an intramolecular force. I'm going to put this in kind of quotes here. The intermolecular force is really that covalent bond. It's a peptide bond. And I go into this in more detail in the Ramachandran plot video, but just to highlight here, when we have this peptide backbone, remember we're looking for the NC alpha carbonyl, NC alpha carbonyl. So blue is always nitrogen. So this is going to be my N terminus, my C terminus. And I want you to think about uh, protein primary structure uh, generally being like a charm bracelet. Okay, so we've got our peptide backbone here, and then dangling off of that peptide backbone, our charms are our amino acid residues. And what I've tried to sort of indicate here, and I think they're staying pretty well in position, is when we have the shape of our peptide backbone, because there's free rotation about, about those bonds, because they're all single bonds, we are going to have everything in pretty much a trans-conformation. So conformation meaning that's the... Uh, uh, interconversion of bond rotations that are going to allow me to reach this structure, okay? So one of the things that's really important with this conformation is going to be the trans conformation. What that allows for is the alternating of my side chains above and below this backbone. And that creates, remember if we look, at the, look down this angle and we think about Newman projections and things like that for carbon-carbon bond forms, carbon-carbon uh, uh, bonds, the most stable conformation is that which puts bulky groups opposite. And that's what we get when we have this trans conformation of our peptide backbone. Now I will kind of highlight that there are a few amino acids that tend to allow more of a cis conformation. One is glycine because it only has a hydrogen atom as its side chain. And the other is proline. And proline is going to, uh, and having our, our side chain sort of tied back into our backbone, it's going to more easily adopt a cis conformation. And so that's going to come into play uh, when we talk about the different kinds of alpha helices and so forth that we can form, whether it's a right-handed or a left-handed alpha helix. Okay, a lot more than I had planned on saying there, thinking about primary structure, which really is just the sequence of amino acids, but a little bit there to think about where we find those amino acids. Okay, so highlighting here, when we talk about secondary, 
quaternary. So a secondary, tertiary, I don't know why I keep saying quaternary first, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary structure. These all represent three-dimensional structures. So I'm going to highlight here that secondary, tertiary, and quaternary structures all contain three, or all three-dimensional structures. So what is different is what is interacting. All right, so what do I mean by what is interacting? Well, the kinds of atoms that are interacting. So I'm going to set this up for you, and then we'll talk about it, and we'll look at some structures here in just a second. So with secondary structure, secondary structural elements, we're going to largely focus on alpha helices and uh, beta strands, which interact to form beta sheets. Now with those, what's interacting are backbone atoms. Okay, so we've got our NC alpha carbonyl, NC alpha carbonyl, and those backbone atoms are interacting via hydrogen bonding. So with secondary structural elements, and so we've got a helix that we've shown here, but it's also going to be beta strands that interact to form beta sheets, and we'll talk more about those details in a little in another video here. We're going to have backbone atoms, and those backbone atoms are going to interact by hydrogen bonding. So it's a very specific kind of intermolecular force. We'll delve into the details of that inter those intermolecular forces when we look at the structures of alpha helices and beta strands um, in uh, particular. But backbone atoms are going to interact to form um, hydrogen bonds. Now, tertiary structure. What's different between tertiary structure is there's interaction with side chains. So interaction with side chains. Okay, so these side chains are going to be able to interact with not only each other, but maybe the peptide backbone. But the important thing is we are talking about interaction of these side chains, and these are interactions uh, with side chains that are going to be within a protein subunit. And that is the key feature here, is it is within a protein subunit. So, these interactions, okay, these interactions are going to be four intermolecular forces Could that we've talked that? about. Could you try again? Those four intermolecular forces that we've talked about are London dispersion forces, then we've got dipole-dipole interactions, hydrogen bonding, and then electrostatic interactions. So when those happen between side chain atoms, but within a protein subunit, we define that as tertiary structure. So we're going to spend a lot of time in another slide in another video here talking about those four intermolecular forces. Now the last thing here to highlight before I actually show you a protein structure here is when we have quaternary structure, again this is going to be interaction with side chains. So interaction with side chains. But the main difference here is it's going to be between protein subunits. And when we're within or between protein subunits, that means that we must have a multi subunit protein. Okay? So quaternary structure is only going to be with multi subunit proteins. Okay, so the last little thing here to show you how this all sort of ties together. All right, I want you to be envisioning this peptide backbone and then these side chains that we have here. I'm going to switch here to look at one that doesn't have all of those dangles, so it's going to be easier to kind of work with and manipulate. So we start out by having primary structure. So primary structure, remember, is just the sequence of amino acids that we have. Now secondary structural elements are going to be things like alpha helices, which we're going to call coils. Okay? And forming these alpha helices is going to be unfavorable from an entropy standpoint. So there's going to be hydrogen bonding that exists between backbone atoms in these different side chain or in these uh, different uh, secondary structural elements to create our different secondary structures. So I'm going to call my beta strands 
zigzag, so I'm making a beta strand there. And we haven't gotten to these details yet. That'll be another video here, but to highlight when we have beta strands interacting to form beta sheets, what we're gonna have there is individual beta strands are going to interact with each other to form a beta sheet and the hydrogen bonding is going to be between these strands, okay? But what we start out with when we have secondary structure is we just don't have a pipe cleaner here that's all linear. We're gonna have a pipe cleaner that has different secondary structural elements that are present. But I've only interacted um, side or backbone atoms, okay? So I haven't started to interact my side chain atoms. That's what's happening when I start having tertiary structure. So when I start having tertiary structure, the side chains that I have all along here are going to start interacting. Intermolecular forces are going to be bringing these pieces together, and I'm going to create my tertiary structure. Okay, we'll pull this out again when we talk about protein folding, and we'll talk about sort of hydrophobic collapse, but that basically just says all the greasy stuff wants to be in on the middle. So here is a protein that has primary structure, sequence of amino acids, secondary structure, individual alpha helices and beta strands interacting to form beta sheets. And now my uh, tertiary structure is having all of those side chains interact with each other and with the peptide backbone to create, in this case, a globular protein. Now remember, we also can have fibrous proteins like collagen, collagen and keratin are ones that we're going to study. But this is a monomeric protein that has tertiary structure. So if I have another protein here that has tertiary structure and I have interaction between these and the side chains between these guys, now I have quaternary structure. Quaternary structure is the interaction between the side chains in my red protein and the side chains in my yellow protein so that I create a multi-subunit protein and that is called quaternary structure. But again, if you only have a monomeric protein, you cannot have quaternary structure. So maybe a little bit on the longer side, but it really is an important thing to think about all the differences that result in that hierarchy of protein structure.